Hello friends, uh, in this part of the video for differentiation one chapter for mathematics in joint entrance examination, we will discuss the relationship between continuity and differentiability. As we have already discussed in the previous videos, uh, the differentiability is defined when the graph, when a curve of a function is smooth and continuity is, a function is continuous when the a, a curve of a function is, does not have any breaks. So, differentiability is related to the smoothness and continuity is related to the if there is any breaks or break breaks in the curve or not. As we have discussed just in the previous video that there is a relationship between these two things because whenever a function is discontinuous, it is sure that it will also not be differentiable. So, in this uh, part of the video, I want to formally diff go over through the various uh, relationship between continuity and differentiability. So, there are three things that I want to discuss here. If f x is differentiable in x a to b, if f x is differentiable between x a to b, it is also continuous in x tends to a to b. So, this I hope this makes sense this in other words all this means is that if a function is smooth in a to b then it also uh, does not have any breaks in a to b. It is very obvious to think about this. For instance, if we take an example for this, so I will give an example for this here. Let us think f x is equal to x square and let us assume that the domain is minus 1 to 1. Okay. So, if we draw a graph of the same, if we draw a graph of the same, then we can easily see that the graph would be something like this, where at x is equal to 0, this is 0 and this is 1. So, th it is smooth. Uh, and as well as uh, there is no break in the same because it is smooth it does not have any break okay now if we do the if you do the opposite of this if fx is continuous in x tends to a to b then it may be may be differentiable in a to b so again if i take the same example once for this so we know that fx is equal to x square from x minus 1 to 1 is continuous. However, that does not ensure that it is differentiable. So, yes, f x is equal to x square is continuous and also differentiable. However, if we take another example of mod x where x is between minus 1 to 1, in here, if you look at the graph of mod x and we have discussed this just some time back in one of the videos also and if you look at the graph of mod x, then in this case uh, there is a corner here uh, a very clear corner here right so in this case if it is continuous so it is continuous mod x is continuous we know that there is no break in the graph but the function is not differentiable so because there is a corner in the graph and you can also calculate lhd and rhd at x is equal to 0 and you will find that it is not differentiable. Hence, differentiability is not ensured whenever the function is cons continuous. However, continuity is ensured if the function is differentiable. So, this is the difference between the two cases. Now, let me do the last case and this is very important. If LHD and RHD both exist finitely, both exist finitely, then f x is continuous. Uh, let me make it more clear at x is equal to a, okay? then f x is continuous 
because derivative LHD and RHD are defined at x is equal to a or some point, then fx is continuous at x is equal to a. So this is interesting. So we said that whenever the function is differentiable, uh, then it is also continuous. However, now this is saying that though it may not be differentiable, if LHD and RHD just exist, they need not be the same, that also ensures that the function is continuous. So this is, you can imagine that this is a more general case that if LHD and exit both exist finitely, they may or may not be same. So I just want to write out here, LHD and RHD may be different. So the function is not continuous, uh, is not differentiable. However, if LHD and RHD exist finitely, then fx is continuous at x is equal to a. So this is a sort of a general concept. Can we can we understand this? So it is very easy to understand this again through graphs. I really like to approach these uh, understanding of these things through graph. So now for this, I want to give an example of greatest integer function. I hope you know the function. Uh, what does fx is equal to greatest integer function means from the chapter of functions? So if you draw the graph of greatest integer function, and let us consider for let, let us consider a greatest integer function in x from 0 to 2 ok 0 to 2 so in this case the graph uh, is something like this is 2 this is 1 and this is 0. In other words, if we want to mathematically understand this, just so that everybody is on the same page, fx is equal to 0 for x greater than 0 and less than 1 and 1 from x greater than or equal to 1 to 2. Okay? So, f at 1 is 1 and f at 1 slightly negative is 0. Okay? Now, if you have to find the, let us discuss differentiability at x equal to 1. Calculate LHD and RHD at x equal to 1. So, if you do that, let us do that quickly. So, LHD is nothing but f limit h tends to 0 f of 1 minus h minus f of 1 by minus h and rhd is limit h tends to 0 f of <laughs> 1 plus h minus f of 1 by h okay so if we calculate this f of 1 minus h is slightly less than 1 and that means that as soon as you are just less than 1, you become 0 and f of 1 is 1. So This is minus 1 by minus h and this will basically approach infinity and f of 1 plus h is 1 minus 1 by h and this is exactly 0 by h and we have discussed this many times in limits and continuity that exactly 0 by h is still 0. Okay? So, the left hand side is infinity and our right hand left hand derivative is infinity and right hand derivative is 0. That means that the function, uh, the, fu the left hand derivative, they do not exist finitely and hence the function is discontinuous. And can you really appreciate this now? So, what does a derivative mean? We have discussed this in the previous videos that a derivative means rate of change of fx with respect to x. So, whenever you have an infinite change, whenever you have an infinite change, so you will have and then you multiply by h only then you will get a finite difference between the two values. So, when so an infinite derivative ensures a discontinuity, right? because as soon as the function is there is an infinite derivative, it will just, it will have to become either infinity or just go up very, very much from the initial point. However, whenever the derivative is finite, whenever the derivative is finite, it will just increase very, very slightly because there is a finite multi number multiplied by h whenever you will have there. Because derivative is the rate of change of fx with respect to x. So let us say we increase in we have an increase in x by 
H times, then the increase in F X would be L H D times H or R H D times H, right? So whenever that L H D is finite or R H D is finite, then the increase will also tend to become zero, and hence the limit will collapse and it will become continuous. However, whenever there is an infinite derivative, there you see a jump, very quick jump. So that was that is the idea behind relationship between differentiability and continuity. So I hope this makes sense. Uh, as we have discussed that uh, using graphical approach is very important in these things. So I hope you are able to now understand the smoothness that whenever the function is smooth, it is differentiable and continuous. Whenever there is a, a corner, then it is not differentiable. Whenever there is a break, it is both discontinuous and not differentiable. So I hope you like this uh, part of the videos. Uh, please check out the next video. In the next video. We'll start discussing uh, things like uh, like examples between dif of differentiability and continuity. We'll do hands-on problems, uh, which are very relevant for JE, uh, and I hope that will be useful uh, for your JE preparation. Thank you.